70% of rape cases are carried out by familiar faces and over 5% of rape victims become pregnant. Another proportion carry out abortion, attempt suicide and suffer from body dysmorphic disorder. This is the case of a young Nigerian lady who decided to share her story with us on the last installment of My Experience, Her Experience with Dr. Obels. I was raped when I was 17 years old by a family friend. He was almost like an uncle to me because we trusted him a lot. My dad, everybody trusted him. He had stayed with us for a while about one year duration during his nyc he suggested to my dad that i come to his place to write wayek so that i would focus read my books and get good grades you know he he said if i stayed in my family house i would get influenced by following the wrong crowd or get uh, my friends would you know distort my focus and it would affect my grades my dad being one for a soccer of good grades he said okay i could go stay with him i went to stay with him the idea was i would stay in his room and uh, he would stay in his brother's room for the duration of the exam when i got there the first day i was given the key actually didn't know he had another kisha i thought i had all the keys i was given the key to the apartment he took some clothes the rest of his clothes was still inside I went, I stayed inside. First day was good, second day. Third day, I was sleeping and I suddenly like felt this hand touching my body and I opened my eyes. It was him. I wasn't alarmed what could possibly go wrong. Then he started, you know, you look beautiful. I want to marry you. I've always wanted you and stuff. He started talking funny and I was not comfortable with the way he was talking, so I was like, I was looking at him for signs of intoxication or stuff. Then I realized he was actually high, like I felt he, maybe he smoked stuff. It was later I got to find out that he actually takes heroin, so he was on heroin, he was high on heroin that day. When I found out that things were, this discussion was no longer something I'm comfortable with, I attempted to stand up and go out. That was where the issue came. He got angry and was like, why am I acting up? That He knows I love him, but I don't want to show it. Why am I playing hard to get? Why don't I want to show him my feelings and blah, blah, blah. Like play, like play. We struggled and at the end he had his way. Basically because like he was 30, I was 17, he was twice my body size, so there's, that's a no-brainer. It was only, I couldn't fight so much. That was the first time. The way the house is built, his house was the closest to the bush. There's a way it was built that people don't really, people don't pass there so often. I mean, what are you going to do at the edge of the village? So if nobody was in the compound, then you were all alone. It became a habit. At the point, I just stopped fighting after the because it, it hurt a lot. For like two weeks, I was constantly bleeding, you know, lightly because the first day he did that was my first time to ever had sex. After the first time the rape happened, he kept coming back. At the point, I got fed up. I mean, it's not like I had anything to lose. My exams had gone a, a whole a long way and. I wasn't writing anything because most of the times I was in pain. And whenever his mom maybe asked, he'd say, ah, she doesn't have paper today. I did try to tell his younger brother and that one didn't believe me. It was like, ah, you know, he, he thought it was a joke. So one of the days when he asked me to bring, to make food for him and bring for him, <laughs> funny he had the guts I did bring the food it was Indomie I did bring the food I thought about poisoning the food but I mean that would be really obvious so when I brought the food I made sure to have an extra fork behind me not star there's this really strong fork 
and then when he stretched out his hand to collect the food, I stabbed him. That was the first time I stabbed him. I stabbed him twice. The second time was, you know, when he tried to come for me again. After the first stabbing, I kept a small pen knife and a fork at the head of my bed. So, to keep me safe. When he came another time, I didn't think twice about it. I stabbed him again. And I think that was like the last time he ever did come for me before he processed my one way visa to go home. <laughs> I failed woefully in that exam. <laughs> oh my God, to think the reason I came there in the first place was actually to get good grades. I got home and I don't know what excuse he gave my dad, but my dad never really worried and he was able to get away with it. My parents are divorced and at the time of the rape, I was staying with my dad. The reason I didn't tell my dad what happened was because it was his best friend's son. I felt like I was going to destroy an over 30 year old relationship between my dad and his friend. Aside from that, I just did not want the whole attention it would get because knowing my family, they would set up meetings upon meetings and make me relieve the whole incident and ask questions upon questions and there was also the possibility they might not believe me. So I thought about it and decided it wasn't worth it. I mean, what if I told them and they didn't believe me? I didn't want to be made mockery of. I didn't want a situation whereby the little uh, relationship I had with my dad would be lost. And I was not very close with my with my mom, so of course that was out of the equation. I couldn't tell her anything. Uh, initially, I pretended like everything was all right, but over time I began to have like nightmares, flashbacks. I was scared all the time anybody moves behind me i was fidgety at a point i had a mental breakdown and i had to be taken to the hospital i stayed for about six months at the uh, psychiatric hospital potakot i left my dad i went to stay with my mom she took care of me to the best of her ability but because i didn't really grow up with her we didn't have any connections it got worse i mean this is somebody i can't talk to i'm in pain and i can't even talk to her and before then, I, you know, attempted suicide, but at that point, it got worse. I attempted suicide about twice, com- making it four times in total that I attempted suicide. After the fourth one, I ran away from my mom's place. I ran away from home. I didn't take anything. I just ran away. I wanted to have some peace. I, I needed a new environment, so I ran away and uh, went to... I squatted with some friends. I was doing some jobs because I already had a skill the moment I left from school. I was a barber. So I was doing freelance jobs till I was able to get a small place of my own. This happened in 2012. So in 2015, I went to get professional help from Doctors Without Borders. The reason I went for the help the second time was because I I got raped again at a a party I went to. I, I felt like I was going to just crash. They gave me therapy for months and uh, I think, sorry, I think the therapy helped. It helped to a long, uh, to, to an extent because I had a whole lot of fears after then. When he raped me, he kept saying, I'm the only one that can want you, no one else can want you, you know, I'm the only one that sees your beauty. Now I've taken your virginity, no man will want you, every man wants a new goods, your second hand, your second class, you know, you don't deserve anyone good, just me. And, you know, always having to see him in my family house, see that this guy is walking scot free despite what he did to me, I felt like it was true. So I developed this, what my doctor called body dysmorphic disorder. I always looked at myself, I looked at the parts that he mentioned that it's not like I, you don't even have 
uh, you're not tall you don't even have a uh, very good shape see your your you don't even have small ways your pimples i had a lot of pimples then i worked so hard i've spent so much money trying to get the perfect body trying to you know work on those things that he said i didn't have so that i can get someone deserving and the more the harder i work the more i find flaws and it gets crazy because it's affecting me i've not been able to keep a, a relationship for long uh, recently i was able to keep a relationship but i mean right now it's threatening to break because even though the guy is perfect and he loves me for who i am and i, I just can't trust him i i feel like this guy he's not telling me the truth what if he finds someone more beautiful than me what if he finds someone more perfect than me and leaves and it has made me i don't want to get married or i don't want to have kids i have a very intense phobia for having children like what if my children don't want me what if i don't become the perfect mother what if i can't care for them and they get molested the way i was what if so many what ifs and it's is ruining the passion in my life i'm fighting so hard recently i i noticed some stretch mark on my arms and i can't tell you how many times i've attempted to use a a razor blade and just cut it off sometimes i tie a handkerchief around it so that i don't see it other times i use my foundation to cover it every day i'm researching new ways to get rid of it i'm researching hospitals that do therapies that can actually clear it i'm i i can't focus on any other thing like that's gotten in the way of my life sometimes i'm indoors for weeks for days because i don't want people to see me and see my imperfection sometimes i i feel like i could block off that part of my memory even when i try to block it off the effect the words are still there that 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 saying him repeatedly telling me nobody can want you i'm the only one that truly wants you i want to believe that i've outgrown the phase of my life where what happened over seven years ago would affect me but the truth is that this is seven years after and i have not outgrown it i still feel afraid to talk about it because Attempting to talk about it reminds me of the imperfections that were pointed out by by that guy. And I remember that I still have those imperfections. If anything, I even have more. And it's like it it puts all my focus on on, on starting afresh to get rid of the, the new imperfections I have. It scares me that I might not be able to truly open my heart up to anybody i might not be able to truly love or truly find solace in relationships because i can't help thinking that they have an ulterior motive (laughs) because the society now is just it's so scary It doesn't get easier. People say it gets easier. You forget it. You know, it's just rape. It happens. I mean, 10, 9 out of 10 girls are raped. No, it's not just rape. It doesn't get easier. There's always that thing that that you lose when, when rape happens to you. There's that part of you that dies that you're not able to get back. And no matter how far I've come, no matter how many accomplishments I've made, in my closet, in my heart of hearts, I just know that there's that part of me that nothing in the world is able to feel, not even all my accomplishments. I honestly wish I didn't have to talk about this, but... I have to.